I have released a Lightroom printing workflow video and the response has been amazing. What I'm going to do in this video is shift gear from Lightroom and talk specifically about Photoshop. So if your workflow primarily revolves around Photoshop for image editing, this is going to go further and talk about printing and how do you get the best result out of your inkjet printer that you may have in your studio or home office. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Let's briefly go over my setup before we jump into Photoshop. So in front of me, I have my 16-inch MacBook Pro that's hooked up to BenQ SW270C. This is BenQ 2K hardware calibrated displays for photographer, and this have been calibrated, and I use this to prove the print that are coming out from my Epson P800 printer, which I love using so far has been a really fantastic printer. I also have a few calibration devices on my table too and these are the ones that I use quite frequent. Shown here is the i1 Display Pro Plus but the i1 Display Pro will work great as well if you're just doing display and projector calibration. If you add printer and paper into the mix the i1 Studio is going to be a better device because it does also paper and printer profiling which is going to be fantastic for that and there is another video that we're going to go over how you can use that device super efficiently and effectively, so make sure you subscribe to my channel for that. I have a lamp here set up, and inside this lamp, this entire lamp setup, I would probably say it's maybe between $40 to $60, depending on the components that you put together. But inside here, there is a LED light bulb, and this is calibrated to 6500 Kelvin, which matches the white point of my display. And this helped mitigate any of the color discrepancies that I may be seeing. And the other thing too is on this lamp, I also have it hooked up to a Lutron dimmer so I can dim it or brighten it as necessary so I can really have a better assessment of the print brightness compared to my screen. And that's pretty much the setup. So let's jump into Photoshop. What you're viewing right now, this is a picture of the wizard portrait wall inside Hogwarts or part of the wall. This is the Warner Brothers Studios in Wattsford, England, and it's been a really cool experience to go there. So if you have a chance, make sure you check that out. But in the previous video, when I talk about the overall Lightroom printing workflow, what I have done is print a picture of that bug out, which I think is really cool. The thing is that that is a singular image. And to really send that file out and print it in Photoshop, I feel like we're not really using or utilizing Photoshop to its full potential. So let's see what we can do to bring this up a few notches. All right, we're taking a look at that picture again. But this is leading up to something. So what I may have not shared with you at any point in time on my channel at all is that I am technically a wizard. There you go. Um, not that kind. I'm really more of like a Photoshop and, you know, color wizard. But anyway, you get the idea, right? So Photoshop is really best to use for these type of composite. It's really fun to put these design, these layout together. And to match all the textures and detail and everything is really awesome. That's my dog right there, and that's his hedgehog. So it's kind of fun. And this is pretty much the original photo or the, you know, the setup that I took a picture of. And I literally just used a pen tool and dropped myself in there. Actually dropped myself into another portrait that was on another section of wall, then dropped myself in there. But occasionally I get bored doing these things and I like to go, you know, go out a little bit. So I go fly around in my Nimbus 4000, which has been updated from the Nimbus 2000 from the Harry Potter movie. It's much faster. I can go a little bit further, I guess. But anyway, I fly around Hogwarts that way. And this is the picture that we are going to be printing. So a lot of compositing is happening and a lot of fine tune selections here. So let's go over some of the base file quickly to show you what we have. The background, the sky itself was the Paris skyline. And it's, I know it's not England, but you know, it, it has that nice cloud and it was what I could find. So it works out really great. So let's put some contrast in there and punch up the cloud a little bit. The actual castle itself is the set scaled down that they use in the actual movie. And I just took picture of it because you can technically walk around the whole thing. And the lighting changes throughout every few minutes or so, which makes it interesting because you can get like warmer, cooler lights and so forth. So we did some contrast control there. And then afterwards, I dropped myself in. This was picture that we capture on the side on this green screen at one another Warner Brothers Studios in Los Angeles and pretty much done some color correction overall. And this is the final picture that we have. So here's the thing. There are numerous ways to print your image out in Photoshop. One way to do it when you're done with your image editing or composite is to go to File Print and what you have is this print dialog. And from there, what you can simply do is scroll down to one of the panels called Position and Size 
and in there is a section called scale print size. You can simply come in and change the scale or dial in the width and the height the, to the value that you want. For example, I can enlarge this to 120%, and as you will see right there, the print resolution is 250. If I change this down to 80, for example, I'm scaling this down, making the image smaller, the print resolution is 375. The thing is that Photoshop is doing some print resolution translation here, and although you can print at pretty much any resolution of these printers and it will do the translation just fine, I found out that sticking to the standard resolution of either 300 or 240 pixels per inch tends to do a better job with printing overall, so I generally like to have my scaling set to 100, which obviously is not really printing at the right size right now. So we're going to cancel off in this print dialog and go back to the image. Now that I have this file, before I go in and print, what I like to do is make sure that my original file that I have spent hours editing, it's left you know, pretty much in the state edit in without any degradation from any image scaling up or down. So the best way to do that is to go into the image menu and click on duplicate. This way you're duplicating the exact picture so that you're working on a copy. And working on a copy is great because if you damage this file or scale it up or down too much, then you always have the original to go back to. Personally, at this stage, I would save and close out the original file. This way I don't have to worry about working on the wrong file. Once you're done with this duplicate file though, if you want to save this out, you can. This is really great if you have to come back and print this file again. This is really handy if you're doing volume printing of that one singular picture. However, for me and for most of us, we're really just going to print this one. So I generally don't save this print file, but this is totally going to be up to you. So let's take a look at the file size now or the image dimension. We're going to use the image menu and image size. This is going to give us a top down view of our picture, which is going to tell us a lot. So the number one thing what we see right now in image size that this picture will print at 16 by 10 inches or close to 16 by 11 inches at 300 pixels per inch. One of the ways that you can do to make the picture larger is to lower the resolution and these printers will accept 240 pixels per inch without any issues at all. As you will notice if I go in and start to dial in the resolution right now, everything remains the same, the size remains the same but the dimension it's changing a little bit. I don't want really my file dimension to change. I want my dimensions to remain the same because I want to retain all those pixels. So how do we do that without throwing away the pixels? Well, we can simply do this, uncheck resample. The moment you do that, you will notice that the width, height, and resolutions link. So think of this as like a currency translation or a currency exchange. I'm going to change this from 300 pixels per inch and I'm going to change this to 240. It's like changing US dollars to UK pound. Essentially, it's keeping the pixel dimension the same. It's printing less pixels per inch, so less density. So now we have a larger printing dimension itself, right? So if you notice, I've gone from 300 before, and if we change this to 240, you will notice right away that I can now print this picture out at 20 by around 13 and a half inches, which is perfect. This is what I need because the final file that I want to print this out at is 12 by 18. So Am I good now? Yes, but this is not really 12 by 18. So what can I do? Well, from here, because I already scaled the file to larger than what I really want to print, I can simply come click on resample and I'll go in here and change the height to 12 inches. So now it's 12 by 18. Essentially what I'm doing is that I'm using the resolution scaling or translation to bring the size up so that it's printing at less density, less pixels per inch, so that the picture is now larger. And then I'm actually using the interpolation here when every time, by the way, anytime you have resample check, Photoshop is doing interpolation. Anytime you scale the picture down, it's actually much better. You retain the sharpness anytime you scale up because the pixel generally doesn't exist when you start to stretch and expand the file, it tends to look softer. So this is why like interpolating is actually not good a lot of times, especially if you have to go up. But now I have this at 12 by 18, resolution 240. I'm happy. I am going to press OK. It's going to take a moment because it's really changing and doing some translation in the file. And now I am ready to go and print. So I'll go into File Print and let's see what we can do. In the print dialog, at the very top, I'll choose the printer that I want to print on and then click on Print Setting. 
This is going to give us a lot more control over the paper size you want to print on and everything. And this is where we would change this information. Currently, this is set to print on eight and a half by 11, which is not the paper size that I want to print on at all. This print dialog will show up once you click on there. Click on show detail. This will bring up the full printer dialog detail. You can go in and change things. For the most part, what we're going to focus on first is paper size. I want to print on 13 by 19. So I will choose 13 by 19 from the menu and I know this is cropping off a little bit. You can choose any other paper size you want or even for 13 by 19, for instance, you can also choose the different load in method. Although I'm going to be printing my image on Epson Velvet Fine Art, which is going to force itself to do a front loading anyway. So I'm not even going to worry about trying to set up the different format and I'm not doing borderless printing. So I'm good there. I'm not going to worry so much about layout, but what I'm going to do here is go into printer setting. And in the printer setting, there's a few things what we're going to do is that the paper source, I can't not use sheet fetter because if I go down here and choose fine art paper, there we go. Velvet fine art's not available. So what I have to do is shoot front fine art and then now go in and choose velvet fine art paper to which, you know, the ink is going to be set to matte black ink. Right now, the printing mode and the color mode is set to Epson and I don't really want this. This is technically supposed to be off. But I'm going to leave it as is for now and I'll show you in a moment another panel within the print dialog that you need to set so that Photoshop would manage the color rather than printer. And we'll come back in here and I'll show you how this is all grayed out, how it is supposed to be. Output resolution, I'll do super fine, high speed, which is perfectly fine. It will print both back and forth. And finest detail, I have that check. I'll click on save. So now, so far, so good. Obviously, this is still in a vertical format. So let's change this to horizontal. There we go. We're starting to look more like our final print. So in the first panel, what you want to look at is color management. And this is probably one of the most important panels in the print dialog beyond the printer settings is that this color handling printer manages color. This is bad because Epson is going to use his own color module to do all the color translation and it can be really bad. So what we want to do here is click on Photoshop manages color. Now we're starting to gain control over what we want to print. Printer profile, you never want to print in any of the generic profile like Adobe RGB, sRGB, you never want any of those. You want to specify the paper that you are going to print on. For this image, I'll be printing it on Epson Velvet Fine Art Paper and I'll be using the stock paper profile that have come with the driver, the Velvet Fine Art Paper there. So I'll choose a stock profile. Down the road, I'll do a custom profile print and show you how you can custom profile the paper and then load it in and so forth too. Send 16 bit data, you can choose to check that or not, which is perfectly fine. Normal printing, yes, I'll do normal printing. And the rendering intent, Photoshop gives you two more options than Lightroom. But if you're doing photo printing, still stick to perceptual or relative colorimetric. So perceptual, again, in general, much better with skin tone because it scales all the color and out of gamut color down so that everything is in gamut. Generally, for perceptual, you will get the image that are less saturated than the original or what you're seeing on the screen just because it's scaling everything down. Relative tends to be better with anything that have really punchy colors. This way you retain the, the punchy colors because anything that is within gamut is kept. Everything that's on a gamut usually gets scaled down to the closest color, you know, within the gamut it can print with some clipping that may occur. So for this one, though, I really want the saturated color. So I am going to choose relative colorimetric. So let's leave it at that. You can have description right now. There's really no description to this file. It's okay. And lastly is position and size. You can change the position, but now you will see that it's set to 100. The height is 12 width is 18 and the resolution is 240. Again, no translation whatsoever. Print area unit inches is fine. You can add any print marks that you want. And there's also different postscript functions you that you want to add, you can. For example, I can add corner crops in. This way it will throw in some of the crop marks. I don't really want any of those. So I was just gonna print it pretty much the way how it is showing in the preview right now. So one more thing we need to do is go back into the printer setting, click on there and then go into printer setting again. And you will see right away that the moment that I choose Photoshop manages color, print mode and color mode, is changed. So it's both grayed out. You can't change them anymore. And that's what you want. If they're not grayed out, that means that the printer is going to influence the way how the color is going to come out. This is a little bit different in Lightroom where you have to go back and forth between this dialogue and double check it a little bit where Lightroom just disable it once you choose the profile. 
I can press print now, but that would be like digital malpractice. Every time before you print from an inkjet printer, it's always wise for you to go in and run a nozzle check. This way you see if a nozzle is performing properly before you send out the print. So what I'm going to do is call the Epson print utility up and different printers will have different utilities, but the Epson print utility is installed on both Mac and PC, especially if you use Epson printer. And again, load a very simple sheet of paper in there. Open the tray up. And what I'm simply going to do is click on nozzle check and print. What it's going to do right now is that it will lay a pattern down to allow me to verify whether a nozzle is clock or not. If it is, I want to do a head cleaning. Otherwise, you'll get banding in your print and you don't, you know, you definitely don't want that because these inks, they're not cheap. The papers that you're printing on, they're not cheap. So we want to make sure that we get everything optimized first before we go in and print. So it's like measure twice and cut once that kind of philosophy. All right, so the nozzle check that I'm looking at right now looks fantastic. It's good so far. So I'll click on finish. I'm not going to go clean or anything and we can close this dialog out. It's always good to close that dialog out and also click on finish because if you don't, it will show that the printer is still in communication with the computer and the print will just freeze and won't go anywhere. All right, now that I have this fairly set, I am going to click on print and let's see what happens. So now that I have this print to queue dialog open is telling me that the paper source selected really doesn't match. So essentially it's telling me you haven't really loaded in the paper yet. I already have the output tray pushed in all the way and I have the front loading tray already pushed out. On the Epson P800, what you have to do too is open this back feeder tray. And this is something that you don't want to forget. Otherwise, your paper will be dangling off the back, which is not good. And what I'm going to do is simply slide the paper in. And let's see if this is going to work. Yep, it picks up on the roller nicely. I'll line this up. You can see the paper popping up on the back there a little bit. And I will tap on load. This is going to load the paper in. Once it's done, it's going to tell me to close this manual tray. And then afterwards, um, it's going to have me pull out the output tray. And then the printing should commence afterwards. Should. All right, open the output tray and push close the front manual feed. So I'm going to close that up, open this, so my print will come out there. And it's going to ask me to confirm the paper 13 by 19 Velvet Fine Art on the printer. I'll say yes. And now the printing will commence. I said the printing will commence, right? It didn't. So I'll go in and press pause on this dialog and refresh. This way it sends the data to the printer again. So apparently it puts a halt there for some reason. But anyway, it's going to print now. And then we'll come back when this is done printing. So what you're looking at right now is the top down view of a printer. And this is pretty much the way how the ink gets laid onto the paper. Pretty much at every single pass, the entire width of the printer itself, the print head you see moving there is laying down ink. So some areas get ink laid down again and again, which is how it builds the density up on the paper. And this is also part of the reason why towards the front of printer, as you see the paper coming out, you will notice that it has a lot more density versus the back of the paper or the first time it gets the ink sprayed on the paper itself. And then the paper would come out just right on the front here, as you see. So now that the printing is done, I have put the image in full screen already so that we can preview the picture on the screen compared to print, this is what it looks like. And what I will do is evaluate this print with my D65 light bulb to compare it between the screen and the printout. And let's see how it looks. So I would say so far so good. It looks fairly close to your shutter. This is printed with a CAN profile. Generally, I found out that if you print the exact same image using a custom profile, the color tends to look a little bit better than the CAN profile one because you're really customizing the profile to your printer, but that's for another separate video. But anyway, I hope that you find this guide on how to print in Photoshop helpful. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified every time I upload cool new guides like this, and there are many more coming. And until next time, art is right.